Welcome back. We're going to test some bullets today. Let's take a look. So these are all hand loads. But what I'm doing here today, I'm going to test uh, cup and core bullets against uh, copper uh, monolithic. And uh, from left to right, I have a uh, Hornady 123 grain interlock in the 762 by 39 to the right of that I have 130 grain Barnes TTSX in the 762 by 39 and uh, this particular load I went five for five one shot kills on deer last season it uh, I know what to expect from it to the right of that I have a 150 grain spear flat point in the 30-30 and I have to the right of that I have 130 grain Barnes TTSX in the 30-30 same projectile as this round but should be a little higher velocity uh, we'll take a look at the targets so here are the victims for each round I have uh, Four jugs, kitty litter jugs, and I don't have a chronograph. I may get one in the future here, but uh, the way I evaluate these rounds against one each other and whether or not they're suitable for deer, I know that that uh, seven six two by thirty nine with the Barnes TTSX. Will explode two of these jugs and pass through two more. So if I can get that performance or greater, because that, that round's about the about the uh, least powerful round, I think is uh, adequate, typically for deer hunting under all conditions. Uh, I find that to be pretty good. It, uh, as far as visibly, it performs. Pretty close to the uh, 444 Marlin with a 300 grain XTP as far as exploding two jugs and maybe splitting a third and maybe passing through a fourth. But uh, typically that uh, 130 grain TTSX will even out penetrate that 444 300 grain in the water. So I'm gonna set. Uh, I'm gonna step back here, maybe I don't know, 25 feet. If uh, if you're concerned about the distance, the uh, the velocity drop from that range to 50 yards, even 100 yards, is uh, it's not gonna be that big of a deal, I don't think. But let's step back there and. Uh, We'll shoot these. We'll shoot these. I didn't bring my calipers. I'm about 300 miles away right now. But uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll measure the remains. And uh, when I get home, and I'll put the uh, expanded diameter in the video and the uh, retained weight, assuming I collect all four slugs or parts of them. 123 grain Hornady interlock. See what we got here. We only blew up one jug. There's some fragments in there. Looks like some fragments in here. In and out the third jug. In and out the fourth jug. And then through the board. I caught it with the tarp. It actually held it be together better than I thought it would. This would be Barnes 130 grain TTSX from 762 by 39.
All right, we split. Split, uh, that's different. Split uh, two jugs. Split that jug, but didn't blow it open. In and out. Oh, no. Stopped in the fourth jug. I think. Yeah. There it is. I'll go back and check uh, this expansion against uh, the Barnes results that they publish online. This would be a 150 grain spear from the 3030. See what we did? Split one jug. Did not split the second. Imagine penetrate pen or expansion was more rapid with than with these other slugs. The big flat nose were in and out of the fourth jug through one board and we stopped after one board. That's what's left over. We'll measure it when we get home. This would be a 130 grain Barnes TTSX from 3030. See what we got. That first jug blew up and took a ride. Second jug blew up. Third jug split. How about that? It's kind of stuck. Let me get a knife. Kind of curled around. <clears throat> Take this one home and measure it, and the rest of them, and uh, talk about what we see here. All right, I'm back at the house now, and. Uh had a chance to measure and weigh all these bullets and calculate the uh, percentage of uh, weight retention. They're in the same order left to right that they, they were introduced. I have a correction to make on the uh, spear flat point. It started out as a 170 grain, not a 150 as stated in the video. Um, and then for reference, Here's what this 123 grain Hornady interlock looks like. And here's the uh, 130 uh, Barnes TTSX. So it's a whole, it's a whole lot longer. It's a whole lot longer bullet when you start out, but um, I don't have an example of 170 flat point spear, but um, anyway, uh, some observations, and I'll put the uh, a recap in slow motion of the impact, and that's kind of how I uh, that's kind of how I evaluate my um, my bullet loads. Uh, my hunting loads, I should say. Um, if you notice here on the on the copper bullets, the uh, the diameter is uh, is larger than the lead, and the uh, the weight 
retention is greater. And I think that's why uh, we get um, the more more violent in what seems like a uh, uh, a deeper um, um, wound cavity is evidenced by the water that that's that second jug st is still erupting where the the lead core bullets just don't do that they they don't hit the first jug as hard they definitely don't hit the second jug as hard and um they don't deform them you watch in the video how especially uh this shot here it it threw the first jug back about 10 feet and it compressed all the jugs behind it's a um the copper does a percentage uh, more damage to the target than the target does to the copper. And the, uh, it's the opposite for the lead core bullets. The, the target damages them more, from, in my observation. And my, uh, my observation in USAN game. So I'm going to run that, uh, that recap. Watch that. It's kind of cool, I think. And... Let me know what you think in the comment section. What, what are your observations, your experiences, and uh, what do you prefer? And have a happy Easter. Thanks for stopping by.